morning. My name is Brittany, and my research topic this summer was small arms and light weapons. This picture up here represents the destruction that is conflict, destruction that is all too often created through small arms and light weapons. First, I'd like to share quick the story of Susan, a former child soldier, as she talks about her first experience with a gun. This is her talking about a boy that she knew. She says, we were from the same village. I refused to kill him, and they told me that they would shoot me. They pointed the gun at me and said I had to do it. The boy was asking me, why are you doing this? And I said I had no choice. This is a definition agreed upon by the United Nations General Assembly in 2005. Small arms can include anything from revolvers to light machine guns, and light weapons can include anything from handheld and mounted grenade launchers to portable anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles. Unlike military grade and nuclear weapons, small arms and light weapons are cheap, easily trafficked across borders, and require almost no training. The flow of small arms and light weapons is not a trade that is always easy to trace. Many times the same batches of small arms will go through many countries, from country to country, and conflict to conflict. As you can see from this chart, the top exporter in the world is the United States, where it is a $14 billion industry. The next top four exporters, the UK, France, Russia, and China, combined are less than the United States, but it is still a $12 billion business between them. It is in these same trade routes that we often find increased occurrences of human trafficking and the drug trade. All three of these trades come under the operation of gangs, cartels, and also terrorist groups. As these groups fight for control of these trade routes, they become increasingly violent, using small arms and weapons to create wars that spill into civilian populations and across international borders. The profit created in these trades support and finance violence and terrorism. It truly is a threat to human security. It's important to note that of the roughly 175 terrorist attacks, identified in last year's State Department report on patterns of global terrorism, that approximately half were committed using only small arms and light weapons. With justice systems in relation to small arms and weapons, I'd like to focus on the discussion of disarmament. One of the reasons that creating any sort of solid non-proliferation agreement is so difficult is because every country has its own unique opinion about how to deal with small arms. There's also a debate about whether stricter gun laws really do reduce crime. One of the articles I found in the New York Times, Gun Laws and, gun laws and Crime, a Complex Relationship, looks at this question. And the answer isn't always straightforward. In, in one study, the New England Journal of Medicine indicated that when Washington, D.C. implemented tougher gun control laws, there was a 25% reduction in homicides committed with firearms. However, in contradicting studies, such as the one published in the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy, it's implied that European nations with more guns in those countries that the crime rate was actually lower. There are several previous programs that we can look at to see what has and hasn't been effective. One of the programs used in various cases is Arms for Development. In this, this program was implemented in, in Siberia and in, in Sierra Leone in 2004 and did see some success. How these programs work is basically that they'll go into a community and they will, they will take the arms that, with the cooperation of the community, they will give them. And in exchange for them giving up their small arms, they will provide development resources such as education and water. However, there's been voiced concerns that maybe these programs aren't truly effective because uh, just because small arms have been removed for, from a community doesn't mean that they are then destroyed. The country or agency that is in charge of these programs and collecting the small arms will often then resell and redistribute those same arms and the global supply of the arms do not decrease. 
So after my summer of researching, I found myself asking the question, now what? What do we do about guns? First, I think we need to have an honest, long, and probably difficult discussion about guns and their place in our world. And I'll tell you what the discussion doesn't look like. It doesn't look like this. There's no more time to keep going around in circles saying, oh, this is so bad, or oh, we should do something, but never actually getting around to doing anything. This summer, I realized about my topic that we need to go beyond the superficial talk about weapons or whether or not to have them and get to the root causes of the situations. Guns do not create the conflicts in which they are used. We need to ask, why is this conflict happening, and address those key issues.